cool. Well, isn't this some dramatic lighting? Hey guys, it's me, Devin, here with Make Anything, and I think I've got a pretty good project lined up today. So this is a flash drive that I've been using for many, many years. It's got like half a gig on it, and it finally pooped out. Yeah, no big deal. They are super cheap these days. Not only are they cheap, but they're tiny. This little guy here is an eight gig flash drive. I know, it looks like it was broken off or something. Eight gigs isn't much at all. These go up to like 128, maybe 256 by now. I don't know. It's pretty awesome that they can fit all this data into this little tiny thing, but it's actually not very handy if you're planning on carrying this around with you because, let's face it, this is really easy to lose. But when it comes to 3D printing, that means I have a lot of opportunity to build around it. So my plan with this little guy was originally just to build a housing around it, something that would let me keep track of it and make it easier to take in and out of my computer. But then so many of you were asking me to make a fidget toy. You know, one of those little toys that uses a ball bearing and spins around in your hand like crazy. It doesn't really have a purpose, but it's kind of cool. But what if it was both cool and had a purpose? It got me thinking, what if I took the flash drive and the hand spinner and merged them together. I think it would be cool. Here are some of my early flash drive concept sketches before I came up with the idea of making it a fidget flash drive. But as I continued doing my ideation, I kind of thought of different ways to make it fidgety and in the end I thought why not just go with a full blown fidget spinner with a bearing right in the middle. So that's where my ideation led me. And I came up with this kind of blend of angular and swoopy that I liked. This three-arm version was pretty cool too, but I discussed it with my Patreon design team and we decided it was just too bulky for the task. So here are these tiny SanDisk flash drives that I bought on Amazon. And just to make them as small as possible, I'm going to sand off all of the unnecessary plastic bits so I use duct tape to protect the actual part that plugs into the computer while I'm sanding. And it also gives me a little bit more of something to hold on to while I'm doing this sanding. I'm using uh, 150 grit sandpaper here, right at the edge of my workbench. That way I only get that plastic part sanded down. And I'm trying to avoid sanding the metal as much as possible. sand it as much as I could on every side, including the top. Might as well make it as small as we can, because with 3D printing, the case has to be a little thicker than if we were using an injection molded casing. So we've got those flash drives and we've got our bearing. Now it's time to design the 3D printed part in SolidWorks. The first thing I'll do is extrude a sketch of the bearing itself, just as a reference to build the model around. So your standard 608 ball bearing is going to be 22 millimeters outside diameter, 8 millimeter inside diameter, and about 7 millimeters tall. So I just made that basic shape, and then I'll sketch on the same plane to make the shape of my spinner. I want the fit to be really tight, so I'm just going to do a tiny 0.12 millimeter tolerance between the bearing and my model, and then I'll offset that by 3 millimeters to create the wall around the bearing. Next, I'll draw out that angular swoop that I had sketched out earlier, and I'm going to create one more circle to kind of figure out the outside diameter of the entire spinner, based on what can spin in my hand. And I calculated that maximum to be about 75 millimeters in diameter. So I definitely want to keep these arms within that range, and even shorter because the flash drive itself is going to be sticking out, of course. I'll just draw the one arm first so that I can make that a circular pattern and I'll do a bi-directional offset from that line to make the width of the arm. I'll cap that off and make this initial arm a construction line. I'll shift the arm around a little bit and continue fiddling with the dimensions until I like how it looks and once I've got that set I can do a circular pattern with two instances to get those two arms. 
I'll extrude that to match the height of my bearing, and then I'm going to go around and fillet some of these sharp corners, just to smooth it out and make it look good. Next I'm going to draw on the end of these arms and create the hole for my USB drive to fit into. I create a centered rectangle and then I dimension it based on my measurements of the flash drive itself and that was roughly 5 millimeters tall and 12.3 wide. I did an extrude cut and I did a circular pattern for that as well. Then I went back to sketching on the entire body here, offsetting the outline and also offsetting the circle. And I'm also going to offset this inner cavity part. I'm basically trying to create the shape so that I can cut out as much plastic as possible without affecting the structure of this spinner. So now I've got all these lines, but I'm just going to select two specific holes by doing an extrude cut and then selecting just those contours. I'll cut all the way through my spinner and as you can see I now have those open spaces that will kind of reduce the weight of the spinner and it looks pretty cool. And as I like to do I'm going to throw in a bunch of fillets on most of the edges. I'm also going to model out the dimensions of the actual flash drive here and I'm going to use that as a reference to make the caps for the ends of the flash drive. I can basically just copy this face and extrude it, but I'm going to offset it just 0.1 millimeters so that they don't merge, and that'll make it a separate body, which of course I want my cap to be. Next I'm going to do an extrude cut downward from this face, because I want to add some triangles on the end here as a little grip if you want to spin it by the end. I'll round those out as well, and then of course pattern that to the other side. And we still have to make a cap for the inside of the bearing. That way it's easier to hold on to the spinner without accidentally stopping the bearing from spinning with your thumb. So I'll make a circle that's slightly smaller than the bearing. And I'm going to make that 1.5 millimeters tall. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. Then I'm going to sketch on this face, draw a smaller circle that's going to fit into that inner hole of the bearing. And then I'll extrude that just up to the cap on the opposite side of the bearing. Then I'm going to draw an even smaller hole, 0.12 millimeters offset from that last column and extrude cut all the way through this part to make it a hollow cylinder. And that lets me do one final column from the opposite cap that goes through everything and will hold the two caps together as well as containing the bearing. Yeah, sorry, you might have to watch that a few times, it's kind of complicated. But with that done, we can go ahead and print this out. Alright guys, so we're going to print this out in makeshape or filament. They sent me three colors, green, white, and navy blue. I really like how this navy blue looks, so I think that's going to be the main color for this spinner. And then I guess the second color will probably be white. So let's open this up. It's vacuum sealed, which is always nice. But check out this navy blue, it's a very nice color. A lot of filament makers tend to go with really basic bright colors, but sometimes a uh, more subdued tone like this navy is nice to have. I mean, I like bright colors. You guys have seen how crazy some of my color combinations are. But, uh, this one's gonna be a little classier. So I'm gonna print the main body of my spinner first because that'll allow me to test the fit of both the flash drives and that main bearing. So, it makes sense to print that one first. So the part came out great and the bearing fits in super snugly just as I was hoping. And the flash drives are super tight fit as well. As you can see it's already able to spin for a pretty long time. But as I was trying it out I realized that another little notch right here in the middle would really help give your finger something to catch on to and give it a better spin. So I made that slight change in SolidWorks, and it did help a lot with the spinning, but I thought even another notch would be helpful. And the fit for the USB bits was a little too tight and was cracking the plastic, so I decided to make that hole a little taller to fix that problem as well. So here's that third version printing out. As you can see, I'm printing it hollow because with a 0.8mm wall thickness, it's already structurally sound enough. Here are those caps that I printed out and these parts definitely weren't going to come apart unintentionally. 
and it also helped to make those holes for the flash drives a little larger. But since it is less of a snug fit, I'm going to glue those into place now. So I'm using this E6000 glue, which I've used in a lot of my projects. It's a great industrial strength glue, but it does take a while to dry, so I taped those into place. That way they would dry in the correct position. I also changed the caps so they have little icons on them, so you can differentiate the two different flash drives. And that way you can have, say, one side for games and one side for work, or whatever you want it to be for. But most importantly, watch it spin. Glorious. Every iteration I printed spun better, so it's a good thing I made three versions and didn't just settle with the first. I'm really happy how it spins now, plus it turned into this cute little character. Of course, let's not forget this is a functioning flash drive, so it does fit to the side of my laptop, and I can use it to store lots of data. Pretty fun combo. Alright, there it is. The world's first, as far as I know, fidget flash drive. I learned what makes these fidget spinners work and what doesn't work. I got those little notches so that it's really easy to spin and I can see why people get addicted to these. It's pretty fun. And I'll probably be carrying it around in my pocket. I've got to say I really enjoy the idea of 3D printing flash drives as well as fidget toys. They're both kind of perfect little projects for making on a 3D printer. So I may have to have some follow-up videos on this one just so I can play around with it some more. But until then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, don't forget to stay inspired.